Streets morning takeover. We lit, we lit, we lit. Yes, it's sir. Tuesday. Boy, it is early. The gang is all here. What up, Miss Shanika? What up, Shouty? Shouty, man. Yep. You know what it is. If you feel like you could beat me today, in Are You Smarter Than Young Jock, then Attorney Adonna, my favorite attorney that is outside of my wife, can definitely hook you up with a $50 gas card. And I know y'all need it because I need the hell. Shouty, shouty. You know it's crazy over here, man. Miss Shanika gonna hit y'all with the word on the streets and more. Plus, it's toxic. Tuesday, and you know what that means. You definitely do, and if you don't, stick around for more Young Jock and the Streets Morning Takeover to find out. Young Jock and the Streets Morning Takeover brings you the biggest thing happening today. What's poppin'? Pop, poppin'? We are now live on your radio. Oh, yes, sir. Your favorite cousin checking in Young Jock and the Streets Morning Takeover. Now, Gotta talk about it. The Supreme Court questions the restrictions on the ability of social media companies to moderate content. It's the First Amendment question for the Internet age. Can the government force social media companies to carry content they've deemed objectionable? The platforms do not have a First Amendment right to apply their censorship policies in an inconsistent manner and to censor and deplatform certain users. The Supreme Court heard arguments in two cases from Florida and Texas, saying states should have a say in the matter. It would require these social media platforms that are creating the compilation of third-party speech to fundamentally alter their product that they're offering we think that's an infringement of speech and the court should say so okay and as you heard it she she feels as if this interferes with the freedom of speech so we're going to definitely be talking about that a little later on uh we got a lot coming up bunny banks gonna take you around the streets in 90 seconds shout out shout out coming up with the crazy report keep it locked young jock in the streets morning takeover keep it locked right here to young jock in the streets morning takeover check the news young jock in the streets morning takeover it's your girl t-h-e-e the bonnie banks i'm gonna get you around your streets in 90 seconds Kicking it off with former President Donald Trump as he's appealing the $454 million New York civil fraud judgment. The judge found that Trump, his company, and top executives schemed for years to deceive banks and insurers by inflating his wealth on financial statements used to secure loans and make deals. Now, the former president's legal team is asking the appeals court to decide whether the judge committed errors of law and or fact and whether he abused his discretion. Wow. So now Donald Trump is coming for the judge's. Uh, discretion in this case so that he can appeal it. So this should be interesting as he's also, you know, coming for Fonnie Willis in the case going on in Georgia. Now, an active duty member of the U.S. Air Force who set himself on fire outside the Israelite embassy in Washington, D.C. has died. The Air Force member who set himself on fire in Washington, D.C. has died. This happened outside the Israeli embassy on Sunday. Investigators have identified the man as Aaron Bushnell of San Antonio, Texas. It is believed he was protesting the Israel-Hamas war. The Israeli embassy said in a statement none of its staff was injured. All were safe. Now, right before he set himself on fire, he said no longer be complicit in the genocide and that his suffering was minimal compared to that the Palestinians. So uh, right now, that's an ongoing investigation of just what's going on there. But prayers out to the family, of course, because 
It's just sad to see anybody die. Now, officials in Alabama said on Monday they had launched an investigation into the detonation of an explosive device outside the office of the state attorney. Attorney General Steve Marshall says some kind of explosive device was found outside his office on Saturday morning. We understand that was later detonated. No one was hurt. Aaliyah is now leading that investigation. Further details on the explosive device have not been released. Investigation remains ongoing there as well. That's around the streets in 90 seconds. Shai Shai's got the craziest thing you've heard all day. Day. Don't go anywhere. It's Young Jack in the Streets Morning Takeover. Yo, it's the craziest story you'll hear all morning. The crazy report is on right now. Shotty, shotty, run it down. Damn, yeah, run it down is what we about to do, man. We about to run down the Father of the Year Award as he throws his son, PSP or whatever game, in the pool. I don't care. Man, what the f- are you doing, Dad? I swear to God. Seriously, what are you going to do? I'm going to call child services. This isn't right. You can't do this to your child. Well, Yes, I can. You're not listening. I have a game in there. I have Halo Reach. You should learn. You that should means learn. something that means something to us that you wouldn't deem. I made a commitment to that. How many times I made a commitment to that. Holy <laughs> Now, this ain't no little boy. This is a grown-ass little boy, man. And he is throwing a tantrum over this damn soaking wet game now. And then he's talking about, I'm going to call child protective surgery. First of all, you ain't no kid. And if you was my child, I would tell you to. And that's crazy. And you know I know crazy because I'm crazy. And crazy knows crazy. That's y'all know what my name is with the crazy report. That's right. I'll be sitting right here on the curb when they get here. Follow me on all social platforms at Shouty the Comedian. Hi. Let's get into these national days. That's right. That's right. Y'all know what it is, man. Let's get into these national days. Mm-hmm. Did you know, uh, today is National No Brainer Day. Okay. Wow. Hey. It's a no brainer. So that mean we don't have to think? I think it's a no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> national Strawberry Day. Mm-hmm. You got nothing for that, Michelle, nigga? No. Do you eat strawberries? I'm, I'm, eat fruit? I'm still... Over here with the no-brainer day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> National Pokemon Day. Okay. okay. Hey, I wonder what happened with the whole little that surge. It came and went so fast. Them cards? No, the little Pokemon where they was on your phone. You was running around. You find the Pokemon in the park in the street. Remember oh, that? Oh, I remember that. Mm-hmm. People was going scavenger crazy. Hunt. It was like a scavenger hunt. Put a po- okay, all right, Michelle. Uh, National Protein Day. Okay. Wow. So protein. Yeah. This this new jump don't care. I'm new. You want some protein? Some protein? Yeah, you want some protein? Now he's just right there. They're going straight to the pro. <laughs> <laughs> That's the protein day. All right, let's get into it, man. <laughs> it is celebrity uh, birthdays. Pisces. Pisces. What's the significance of a Pisces? Y'all know? Nothing. Wow. wow. I'm not going to do that to y'all. All my Pisces, shout out to y'all. I can't right believe there. you said that. They, you are. I don't something. like a lot of them. You must have dated a Pisces. No. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, one time I did. Mm-hmm. This one time. One time in band camp. Face that. I, Very uh, passive aggressive sign. Well, listen, I ain't going to diss nobody. I'm happy Mm-mm. for y'all, Pisces. Uh, it was very short lived. Okay. Say no more. Uh, happy, speaking of short lived, Bobby Valentino. Don't do that to Whoa. Bobby. Wait a minute. I'm saying my boy's short. Don't do that. That's my oh, he's short. He's lived a short, short life. Both of y'all short. <laughs> it, it, Bobby, my brother, though. I love Bobby. Yeah. Y'all uh, just became back friends. And that's cool. That. That's life. Y'all just, you are so salty. Hey, okay. No, I'm not. And I'm telling what? the truth. And guess what? Your friend started off insulting somebody for their birthday, saying that they're short. It's okay. That's Happy birthday, Bobby. That's our yeah, brother. Don't worry about none of that. Happy birthday you to the boy Money, man. Shot? No, he's not. Yes, they're about the same height. They're about the same height. Uh, happy birthday to Daniel Gibson. That's booby. I guess. Okay. I don't know. I think it is. All right. Well, uh, you know what? Let's get into it right now, Swin. It's somebody's birthday. Wish happy birthday to all of the celebrities. Yeah. It's birthday wish list. We're going to talk in the streets morning takeover. Ooh, she had the clappers out, too. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Shot niggas too crazy. Yeah, it is. Turn me up. Let's Turn me go. up Where my birthday crew birthday. Oh yeah Where my birthday crew birthday. Talk to me Where my birthday crew birthday. Yeah yeah Where my birthday crew birthday. Hey Symphony Buford What's up John Clark Hey Ambria Shaw Hey Laura Hendricks <laughs> Hey Hannah Lawson The Mario Well Samantha Wilborn and Jolly Rancher. Give me, 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 give
Yes, sir. It's a toxic Tuesday. Um, speaking of toxic, some people can be really toxic. And some things that uh, we do can create a toxic rift. Um, Bronny James, LeBron James' son, has been removed from ESPN's 2024 mock draft. Bro Bible. Bronny James is projected to go undrafted in ESPN's latest 2024 NBA mock draft. He is averaging 5.6 points per game, 2.8 rebounds per game, 2 assists per game, and he is shooting 36.4% of a field goal percentage. Now, Mm. what does that do to a kid's dreams, man? It's kind of, you know, I guess when you say if you want to be in the big leagues, you got to understand it comes with big responsibilities, right? But this is a mock draft, right? And of course, it helps people have it's kind of like a fantasy type thing or whatever. But LeBron James responded uh, via Twitter. He said, Can y'all please just let the kid be a kid and enjoy college basketball? The work and results will ultimately do the talking no matter what he decides to do. If y'all don't know, he doesn't care what a mock draft says, he just works. Earned, not given. I feel you, bro. I feel that. Cause that could be discouraging. Could you imagine that? Cause people go by that. You got some yeah. people looking. That's why I say the bro Bible. Yeah. It's like, oh, if this mock draft come out, it kind of plays out like that. It's like it's like having a um, it's like having a lottery book that yeah. tell you how to how to predict the numbers to come out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But that lottery book didn't help me. It didn't. It nah. don't help everybody. It don't always follow the way they say. But some people just continue to follow numbers and patterns, and it just works. Yeah, tag numbers work better for me. <laughs> So, Nika, what you got coming up, buddy? All right. Well, we got to talk about some things like there are some new accusations about Diddy that's out and about. And um, a lot of these things are being questioned by people. Yeah. So, Russell Wilson is talking about being a parent to future son. All right. Finally, he speaks out about that. And to wrap it all up. There has been a filing for divorce. Yes, it looks like it's about to be a wrap for one of the most tumultuous reality television couples. All of that and more coming up in less than 10 minutes. Keep it locked right here to Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. Turn off the lights. The mics are on and ready to go. Ladies and gentlemen. Word on the streets. She be bopping. I need more. Word on the streets. Bring me by like on a moped. Word on the streets. It's Young Jack in the Streets Morning Takeover with Miss Shanika. That's right. Let's get into this word on the streets news and talk about what's really going on. It has uh, been announced by Princess Love that her and Ray J are going their separate ways. Oh, All right, man. dear family, friends and family, it is with heavy hearts that we share the news of our decision to divorce after much reflection, discussion and counseling. We have come to the difficult realization that our paths have diverged and it is in the best interest of both of us to part ways. So they're asking for understanding. They said grateful for the love and the friendship. I wonder what Ray J's gonna say. That's they do this every so often. So. No, I think it might be real this go around. You think so? Especially since she got that new bag mm. from playing poker. I think she's found something that she's even more passionate about. Mm-hmm. Than like, loving him. Well, you know what's interesting? And his bull. Well, even though Ray J come with a lot of shenanigans, Ray J do, do know how to get the bag, though. Yes, he does. And here she is. She's found something that, that works for her. Mm-hmm. And they've already been down this kind of rocky path for some time now. So it's probably like, you know what? I'm going to let you be passionate After about what you about. he pushed her in the pool? Well, he didn't just push her. She she ran up on him and tried to attack, and she lost her balance. Mm-hmm. He just All he did was stop her from hitting him, and her force pushed herself off of him into the pool. She, nah. she and I even talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it. Mm-mm. Anyway, well, I like when she bleached his clothes. <laughs> 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 that was in the beginning of their relationship. That's terrible. Well, he had stole her from Floyd, uh, but it made well the house. Wow. Everybody was getting their girls from over there at one time. Mm-hmm. Moving right along. Um, 
<laughs> Let's talk Russell Wilson. And of course, he's talking about being a parent to future son. When I walked in the room and I saw little future, he's nine months at the time or whatever, and he crawls in my lap and it was like, you know, this is going to be my responsibility. I remember leaving that night and God saying, this is, say, son, this is for you. Yeah, the first night. Mm-hmm. Baby, let mm. me tell you something. Ain't nothing like <laughs> finding a new daddy before the kids turn one. Wow. He said, nah, I'm man. not going with you. Uh-uh. Boy, she was quick to find a new daddy, boy. She was not playing a radio. Maybe not even just that. You know? Sierra, then God had told that man that that's supposed to be his baby. He, no, that well, cause I love it. Because in his mind, he already probably was like, I'm looking for a wife. She fit the description. Mm-hmm. Dang, this little baby come with her. I, I, I guess what I gotta do. do. I got my baby too. I got the. Ch- he got. I mean, his dad got a bag. His mama got a bag. Mm-hmm. Man, step daddy got a whole big old bag. Yeah. I love the way that he loves um, little future. Hey man, to that. Every bonus dad should feel like that. Every about single I'm last about one. It. If you don't feel that way, you get out. Please. Get out. Okay. And lastly, let's talk about this guy. Uh, his name is Rodney Jones. Mm-hmm. He's um, a former, okay, a former videographer for Diddy, and is alleging that Mr. Combs touched him on multiple occasions, and Diddy walked around naked mm. and allegedly touched his genitals. Mm-hmm fondled his anus and called it horseplay. He also claims that he's received multiple advances from others at Diddy's request. Showed him a video of allegedly Stevie J sleeping with a man Mm -mm. and that Stevie J also advanced him uh, sexually. All right. Also, Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar. That is what the attorney Sean Holly is saying to TMZ, who filed a $30 billion lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. So we're going to see how this situation plays out. But these are some really damning accusations. One question. What? He was a videographer. That what they say. He ain't got none of this on video. I mean, I would have recorded something. That's what I say. I say, you uh, didn't get the picture. <laughs> I heard that at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that is the Word on the Streets news. And uh, I'm going to keep you updated in the next hour. You guys can go to Streets Morning Takeover to get caught up on these stories. Thank you, Miss Shanika Nika. Uh, we oh got to talk about this, man. What are we talking about this morning? Are we talking about these women who feel as if they shouldn't do wifely duties for a boyfriend? Oh hmm? We got to get into that this morning, huh? We got to because some things were said that I can agree with and I also disagree with. We're going to talk about it coming up. Ah, man. Trending top is crazy this morning. Keep it locked. Young Jack in the streets morning. Take over. Do not cook for a man who is not married to you. Women, you are the prize. Why are you making these men feel like they are the one? It's such a pity that some girls get pressured in their family. Go and get a husband. You must get married. Leave the house. So now these certain girls have this messed up mentality of, I must please a man. If I talk to my boyfriend about the wrong things he's doing, he might leave me and I'll end up lonely. How can you be doing the house chores and your husband is not helping you one way or the other? Who did you marry? Your friend or your boss? Mm, Such a pity. Such a pity. Wow. Now, (laughs) Ah. Okay. So, what are wifely? What was the last thing she said? Who did you marry? Your friend or your boss? Because she's saying once you, as a girlfriend, once you take on this role as a wife and you're not a wife, Mm -hmm. then you're doing things like chores around the house. You 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 got to listen to what he says because now he's the. I mean, if he if if y'all in the house together, he the head of the household. That's plan plan like that. I ain't listening. But I'm wow. saying though, but 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 wifely duties. I don't know, you know. So when, when you start talking about Trina, man, like he's your husband. How do you? How what do about you, how does a man treat a a woman like his wife? Maybe making sure she has. Because why is it always on the the women to do wifely duties? What is a duty of of husbands that gets uh, preceded? Before uh, marriage Well that's just like A man out Coming in If he's offering um, Any type of Financial stability mm-hmm. First of all 
Okay. So if he paying the bills. So if he paying bills, then that off rip, then it, it has to reciprocate on that side of yeah. things too. He shouldn't be doing that for a girlfriend if well, she's not a wife. I shouldn't be paying none of your bills. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't be helping you with none of your, your whatever. If that's the case. So if you're coming in and we busting down bills 50-50, security. then what, I mean, I'm cool what with is that. it? I'm, I'm hey, cool with that. That means we practicing. That means we're sharing cool bills, we're that. sharing responsibility, and mm-hmm. we see we can cohabitate and share. But and here's something interesting. Somebody's going to get upset listening because I said I'm cool with 50-50. I am. I'm Let me just trying to see what else a man do before marriage that makes him I mean, not doing husbandly well, duties. Well, if he's, if, he's prop- if, if a man is properly courting you, mm-hmm. then it's, it oh, should. You better say that. It will make you feel like he's husband material. Yeah, if he's pumping your What's gas a proper, that night. Um, court. Okay, like I'll give you a perfect example. Come on, if if I'm if I'm trying to date you, I'm not trying to get you to come to my house right away. Okay. I want to do other things other than go to the movies. I'm not just trying to Netflix and chill. Let's not just go straight to the strip club. Let's not it all be fun and we are involved with everybody else. We got to do different things so I can get to learn you, know you, and vice versa. So why not go to a fern bank? Why not go to a museum? Mm-hmm. Why not go to a Six Flags or something like that? Something where we can communicate because a lot of times we get put in places and spaces where we can't properly communicate. Yeah. I'm just trying to see what other thing are you bringing to the table as a man that makes you a husband Okay, what, that I should what, do wifely duties for. It? Because if a man is making sure that your car is filled up, if a man is doing housely duties, cutting the grass, if mm-hmm. he's... Uh, oh, I if the house, cutting some damn grass. <laughs> yeah, I love to cut my grass. But if, if a guy is fixing things mm-hmm. and he's taking care of male duties that have to be served as a purpose in your life, then that's becoming husband material. When he you realize... He got your back financially. He DJ got your. Swin, what else can you do besides um, cut grass? A perfect one from <laughs> Russell Wilson. Once you start teaching and training her kids, mm-hmm. yeah, going to those baseball Ooh. games and teaching, you know, so doing homework, and, yeah. and all of that, yeah, yeah, those yeah. are husband husband duties. I, I believe that, that was perfect. But then those so, are things that you want to do because you want to get in good with the family. No, it's not. No, it, no it's not. That's you, not always that. What yeah. are you talking about? That's not always that. Mm-hmm. We're playing. That is cow. Don't do that. Um, okay, so what's the reason that he's doing it? Bunny, first what you of all, think? that would, when a man decides that he's going to date you, the kids, of course, are going to come. So that's like a natural, he has to accept the kids exactly. and take care of them. So that's not a husband duty that would make me want to be a wife to you. What? You guys still have not that's to me the answered the question. That's the prerequisite yes. of you even you already having knew a I had chance a kid. with me. Okay, well, hold on. Tell so what me. is, what again... If I'm treating you as a wife right. and we are only dating, what are you doing in return that deserves to be a husband? I That's just, what I'm not cutting the grass. Are you literally it. coming over I'm to somebody's condo you. and cutting I'm their grass? I'm dating you. If I have to, I would. Yes. I've helped. I've, listen, let me tell you something. How my little boyfriends used to let me, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something about me and Kendra. Let me tell you how we got so tight. Mm-hmm. When I would have to travel and go anywhere up the eastern seaboard and I knew I was going past her hometown... I would invite her to go because I could take her to see her family. It won't cost her nothing. We could spend a few hours in the car together. Boom. I'll go handle so my business. So you showed that you were invested in the family. In her and her family. And, and because Who I didn't, was with him? I didn't care. I'd take her right there. Boom. Sometimes she'll go. We'll stay for a little while. It'll be a fish fry summer. We'll go on. Or she'll that stay so she could spend time with her father. And then when I come back, I pick her up. We talk about her trip. I talk about mine. We end up back in Atlanta. Okay. So at what point does a woman... If you're dating, uh, treat you as if she is your wife. I think I think what this young lady was saying in that in that particular clip, she was saying basically, why am I gonna cut off dating when it could possibly be somebody else better out here? Why am I gonna come to your home and do chores, <laughs> clean up and cook for you, wait on you hand and foot <laughs> if I'm not your wife and you could possibly marry someone else. Exactly. That's what she was saying. Because man, you know what who he's exactly. gonna marry? He gonna marry the woman to make him feel good. A man stays around because the way a woman makes you feel. Yes. That's if you not make true. me feel wanted, you make me feel no, good, I, you make me feel like I can is, be with you for no, the rest a lot of, of women life. let some men, men, men a lot of women um make men feel very good about themselves and they, those men still walk off and go do X, Y, and Z. So that's that is not So you gonna thing. live so you gonna live like that saying every man gonna leave. No, you, I'm you, not saying that. I'm saying but there should be maybe a prerequisite to where it's like, okay, maybe now is the time that I might up my ante of being more wifely to you because if I'm your okay. girlfriend 
and I'm treating you like a wife, and then you decide to go do X, Y, and Z. It just it doesn't benefit me at that Honestly, point. Honestly, I think it should happen in we phases. Go. We do. I don't think people teach the phases of how to get to that space. So let's talk about it. We want to know from you guys, man. Should women treat boyfriends like husbands before the actual day, the big day? Mm. Call us up one eight four four Y U N G J O C. Young Jock in the streets. Morning, take over. What's up, man? You know who it is. It's Toya Turn Up. And every weekday from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., I'm listening to the best damn morning show. Young Jock in the Screes, Morning Takeover. And we appreciate you tuning in. All right, man, this trending topic is kind of interesting this morning. The phone mm-hmm. lines lit up so fast, and it always does when it comes to relationships and uh, that type of topical combo. Um, there's a woman who said that women shouldn't do wifely duties for a boyfriend um, until she becomes an actual wife. So we got to go right to the callers. Our phones are ringing right now. Uh, young Jock in the Streets morning take over. Should women treat boyfriends like husbands before their wives? Yeah, I just feel like, you know, if a husband, well, if a man is going to take over for, for um to, to be a husband, then like you said, Jock is going to do the things that's making her feel good. And the woman is going to do things that make him feel like he's appreciated. So he will be able to take the extra step to become the husband that she wants. Oh, hey, good morning. How y'all doing? So, yeah, I listen to your station every morning, but um, I did want to say that us as women, we sometimes don't want to do that, like take care of a man um, and do, like, womanly duties. But a lot of us women are nurturing by nature, so we just really can't help it. And, I mean, sometimes people take advantage, and sometimes they don't. Some women, they do want to do that, and sometimes they don't. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, I'm going to just make it real simple, man. You get a promotion by sh- by proving that you can do the job. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. And I think that works on both It works on both sides, though. Let's not mm-hmm. act like, come on, y'all. Let's not act like this is not a, a mirrored conversation here. I know that this young lady was speaking, but she was on a podcast speaking and we don't have the clip. Uh, we don't know if a guy was on the other side reciprocating this conversation because I feel the same way. It's some things that men possibly shouldn't do before. Like, perfect example. I know guys all the time with a bag because they got a bag. They'll go drop a down payment to get a, to upgrade a chick car. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he your boyfriend, should he be doing that? Because no, that's what husbands Number do, one right? thing men shouldn't do trying is trying to get her attention. Hey, our kids. See what I'm trying to say. Well, as a woman, you trying to get the man's but attention. But it's like too. A, a grandiose gesture that well, the a man grandiose, is doing. A grandiose right? gesture. To shut your other stuff down. But a grandiose gesture is treating the man better than any other uh option that he has. That that is the concept. Yeah. To be to, to show I improvement. Know how to rest it on street you don't now. you don't have to know. You just be <laughs> your you best. Self. You just you, do you, your you, best. Yes. You yeah. don't have to see the competition is Why? blind sometimes. And, and see, when, women should get in a custom. <laughs> <of> <laughs> women. women should get in a custom. Do you not agree? Like, like, do you not heart. agree? The you competition is blind sometimes. It is. It is. Y'all got to be for real, man. We love y'all, man. Thank y'all for time <laughs> tapping in this morning. It's time for the date dilemma, man. One eight four four Y U N G J O C. That's one eight four four nine eight six four five six two. 986 Y'all know how this go. Yep. Keep it right here where you got it, baby. The best damn morning show. Young Jack in the streets morning. Take over. <laughs> You are now listening to The Date Dilemma with Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. If you got a dilemma, they got a dilemma, which means we got a dilemma. It's The Date Dilemma. Who's on the line this morning? My name is Joyce. Me and my man, his name's Roy. Okay. Uh, we've, been, we've been dating for like a year and a half. He used to have like a, a pill addiction to opioids before we dated. Okay. And, you know, he's been clean as far as I know since we've been dating, but he's been using my car. He got into an accident, lost his car. He hasn't got a new one. Been driving mine because he does Uber. So they, I guess they've been letting him, you know, use my car in replacement, then get a rental. And he's been moving weird. And so the last couple of days, he hasn't even been picking up my phone calls, texting me back. Yeah, your car? It's, it's like, still in your he's car? Like, he's in my car. I've been having to Uber to work. And I don't want to report the car stolen because that, that is my man, like as of now anyway. You know what I'm saying? The last thing I want to do is have a police and looking he, for him and if he is on drugs or something. I don't know. Oh, so you say he on drugs. He used to be on pills real bad before we started dating. And, and he ain't brought your car. Does that mean he done peeled out? I, I don't know. I'm trying not to. Honestly, I would rather him be. I, neither, really. But I would rather him be cheating than be on drugs. Whoa. I know. I, it, you would rather him then, cheat than be on drugs? No, no, no. no. I, I don't. That's why I say neither, really. But that's his health. You know what I'm saying? It's hard for us to do a welfare check. If he answered the phone for us, then mm-hmm. clearly, you know, he just didn't want to answer the phone for you. Yes, because he's not been responding at all. His phone is just sending me the voicemail. You have functioning junkies, and then you have... Junkie junkies. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah we're saying the same thing for you, sister. What's his name? His name's Roy. 
Roy. Let's put you on hold for a minute. See if we can get Roy on the phone, okay? Thank you. All right, hold on. You can't say the man has an addiction and then you know what comes with an addiction and turn around and say, I hope I didn't get no janky. I mean, oh, no. Roy speaking. You at work, Roy? Roy, I always work. <laughs> What happened? Who it is? Roy, listen, uh, real quick. You on the phone right now. I know it's going to be a little interesting, but young job, Miss Shotnik and Shout to Shout How you doing this morning, my boy? What's up? I don't want something then. That's what that means, ain't it? Yep. Want to come pick it up? Shout to Shout, you got jokes, ain't it, man? Oh, so you listen to us. Okay, Roy. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, man. I don't want something. If y'all calling me, I had to win something. Yeah, you right. Roy, you sound like you've been up all night. Yeah. Well, I have. <laughs> You ain't ready to go home, bro? Nah, but I do that Uber thing 24-7. Y'all need ride. What y'all need? Okay, so you Uber. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Oh, That's good. Work. So let me ask you a question, man. You dating somebody right now, Roy? Yeah, I dating somebody special, man. Real special, man. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Y'all know what special is. Yeah. Yeah, like let you get her car and don't call the police when you don't bring it back special. Well, wait a minute. Tell me what, what y'all know. I don't know. We know no, you ain't I'm been home, bro. Cut my job and tell me driving. Well, yeah, but you got to stop. You can't drive for four days, Roy. You know, you driving your girl crazy. She think you back on drugs, brother. We're going to just break it down for you. We know you've been gone for a few days. You sound half wired now. Mm-hmm. Any truth in that, Roy? When you say why, what why I mean? Tell me why what why. Why you why are your ass back, <laughs> back to that girl house and give her a call? Ain't nobody got time to be playing games with you on the phone. Oh, Shanika, Shanika, what going on? You yeah. don't know me. He be up riding listening to us. Don't even be no minute sleep. You know all okay. that. I, I Uber, bro. You I Uber the with somebody else's car? Boy, that's my baby, man. That baby girl. Okay, well, she said you ain't been answering man. the phone. You know she can't about? find you. What, what's yeah. going on now? Where she at? Oh, she on the phone. <laughs> oh, Since she, asked, she on the phone right here. Sweetheart, here you go. What's up, baby girl? You, I don't believe you. You don't believe it's what? What you don't believe? Because you, sit, because you sitting here, you playing this whole, I've been Ubering for two days. Been two days. Well, I've been having to Uber to work. Wow. And hey, you Uber. How dare you have me stranded at my house and you outside in my car doing God knows what? You were like, you were straight. When, when I grabbed the keys, I was like, don't matter if I'm straight. I'm straight. I pay the bills on that straight? car. Mm. But, but you said you were straight, baby girl. If you say what I'm is, straight. What does straight mean? What the hell are you told? What does that mean? Straight means you're straight. Like, I'm straight. Like, you know straight what like what that? You be like, it's, I'm straight. I'm no, straight. No, at the moment, not 48 hours later, fool. What are you thinking about, man? Come on, you man. You bring my car back, like, right now. Come on, man. I got a bunch of rides lined up, like a bunch of them. I'm talking about this a busy day. Hey, you talking to him? You need to be talking to me. I with my car. Of- I didn't stay here and not call the police and, and reported my car stolen. I think you need to report you need to your car stolen. She gave me no, keys. No, no. What? No, she, she we gave me keys. Do that. Yeah, but after you've been gone with somebody's property for a certain amount of time, it's called Civil. theft. Y'all sound like the police, man. Well, no, tell no. me what you hey, want you to do. You like a real junkie right now. Yeah. You ain't never took my car for two days and not returned. You have not even called that. You know what? Y'all a team for real, man. That's crazy how y'all called Joyce. Did y'all call Joyce? Hell no, nah, she called us. Tell the police for real, man. Joyce, you called, you called, you know, jock me on. Yes, <laughs> yes, she did. Joyce. I don't have time for this, and you need to but bring my slick. car back right you now. Slick, you, 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 you slick, because you slick, because I talk about them all the time. But did you hear what I said? You called jock me, because you knew I was going to But Roy, did you hear what I said? I'm just telling you, that's wrong what you done did. You done, man. Boy, you're not finna turn this around on her. We are not finna be manipulative in this conversation. Do not. I play. I know you're not lady. Lady. You're not supposed to do them drugs. Bring my car back, right? Roy, Bring let, my car me, let me just chime in. I've been sitting back listening. My drugs. Bring my car back. Roy, Roy. Roy. I don't go back and forth with people on drugs. It's going, it's, go this is going, on, it's going on too too long in this phone call, Roy. I don't think this is funny. Um, this young lady is really calling us because she's having an Uber and you talking about you allegedly Ubering in her car. <laughs> well, I got talking. a man that Uber and don't even come Uber his, his girl to work. How that sound? In her car. I'm Are you going to bring the car back? I ain't got no choice. How how long? What I'm going to do? When you going to bring it back? About 30, 40. That's what you got. Because if I don't have my car back in 30 minutes, I'm calling the police. Period. You know what I was saying before I leave from here? You no, you need to leave now. What do you mean? You don't give me no ultimatums. You and my sh- Bring me my car back. Are you going to bring her car back? I'm going to bring her car back. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. You are All right. If he, don't, if he don't give you the car back, call us back. I love Joyce. Man, on behalf of 1-800. He just said he going to bring it back. We, no, uh-huh. I, no, he going to take it I'm back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm getting up now, I promise. You getting up? Yeah. What the? Getting up from where? I thought you was Ubering. I'm getting up. I pull it over and just start, you know, I lay it back. So I'm getting up. I'm going to crank up right now. <laughs> Oh. You got 30 minutes. Right? Starting now, you got 30 minutes. On behalf of 1-800-Engine, the Bethune Law Firm, man, we're going to hook you up with $100, man. What? We de- yeah, I mean, he, she did what she wanted.
it. She wants him to come back in yeah. her car. He getting up and, to go take the car. And she back. still care because she's doing a drug. Well, are we splitting that joy? Hundred dollars. Oh, no. She going to get the $100. Bring her her damn car back. And to our listeners, call us up. Let's talk about it. Because it ain't no way, man. You finna be playing with me in my damn car. You need to be on your way to me. Period. one 844 yunjoc Again, that number's one 844 Call us up right now for the day dilemma. Keep it locked. Young Jack in the streets morning takeover. That was the day dilemma. With Young Jack in the streets morning takeover. That's right, y'all know what it is, man. Hey, man, I'm on live on three different phones. And when I tell y'all these comments are going crazy crazy right now dog we got to talk about this date dilemma joy said a man used to be on pills really bad mm. now he's borrowed a car right the joyce ain't got no way to work she's trying to figure out how to get to the gas station just to get her some 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 uh flaming hot frito cheetos and she can't even do that because a man is m.i.a he ain't been asking the phone so he of course she called us she hit us at the number i tell you every morning day dilemma uh-huh got a man's on the phone we get this man on the phone. This man say, yo, I'm in a great relationship. You heard me? I ain't been home. <laughs> and I'm in her car. And I ain't answering her phone. All them are violations. They are. If you don't come home, that's a violation. If you use my car and don't come back, that's a violation. If you're in my car and won't answer the phone, that's a violation. Yeah. She told him, man, he got 30 minutes to get that. She got, he got 30 minutes, dog. Let me bring it down So I got it I, My heart Them, them pills man it, Them pills in that car She, she, she gonna take him back Cause he got that whoop a pill <laughs> I don't think she gonna take him back <laughs> That woman is talking about Calling the police live on the radio When he show up They might be the way You heard me Let's not say that Cause he might be tuned in Listen He been <laughs> drove up here in her <laughs> car Don't pull up <laughs> <laughs> the street for the takeover Talk about this day dilemma Realizing, okay, wait a minute, because Bobby Whitney, listen, hey, sir, you need to take that lady in her car. You need to make sure you don't leave nothing in her car in the event that she get pulled oh, over oh, in her car. Wait a, wait a minute, did you say up. Bobby and Whitney? Yes, girl, you knew that man was out here doing God knows what. We're not going to sit here and act like it, because this can't be the first time that this done happened. Okay, he a whole fool. How in the hell do you think you going to take my car, be gone? 48 hours. You try to haggle me on when you gonna bring it back. If you gonna get your ass up and bring me my this should have been got that time back. Nikita and I'm calling from Atlanta, but I'm from Memphis. Listen, first of all, you cannot be letting people play in your face like that. That's a chance from God. She got a choice right now. To get her car back, or she can get that rap that God got for him. Because you can't use good people and say good things to happen out there. You do bad things, bad things gonna happen. He ain't going to never learn his lesson while she's being an enabler. I've been with one, so you cannot be an enabler to them. They're going to hurt you and everything that they say. Okay, then, T.T., take them to church, won't you? Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, man. Hey, man. <laughs> Miss Shani going to be coming up shortly, man. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Word on the streets is going to be juicy today. Yes, it is. Oh, you already know how it gets down, man. Are you smarter than young jock? It's coming up, too. Go ahead and start practicing now, man. Go go ahead and look at Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, or something like that before you get on with me because I ain't playing no game today, and that's on God. Keep it locked. Young jock in the streets morning. Hi! Hey. Oh, yeah, it's the top of the hour. You know what it is, man. Shout out to everybody tuned in with Young Jock. Miss Shot Nigga, shout out to Young Jock in the streets morning. Take over. I got to hit y'all with a few shout outs real quick. Shouts out to Nugs 420. I am Real Estate One. We love y'all for checking in. All right, we got to get into this trending topic, y'all. Um, I saw this post. Well, we all actually saw this post. We were talking about it. It say, my people that were raised by extremely strict parents, how has that affected you as an adult? That's one of them questions where you, you have to really sit back and assess who you are and just think about, like, why are you the way you are sometimes? Oh, I know. I know that that affected me. <laughs> How so? Um, It made me really green about a lot of things okay. at a young age because um, my mom was, like, very, very strict. I couldn't even listen to the music that we play like on the radio so, so is wow. that how you kind of found yourself so like deep into this world because sometimes when you keep yeah, kids away I was from like, stuff I was like buck wild and I was like very rebellious when it came to anything it was like very hard um, and I was a little buck wild I think I have because social. I was so restricted no I think my um, some of the ways my mom parented 
um, I think that it, I, I would get anxiety mm-hmm. because a lot of times if you walk in while something going on, you you you, you can't don't be in grown folk business for one. Leave out the room. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I find myself a lot of times when I walk into places and people are like, they're already, I'm like, I don't, maybe I'm not supposed to be here right now. So it gives me an anxiety. And people, most people don't know that. That's why I'm, that's where, where my shyness comes from. And when I say I'm shy, people are like, how? I am too. But We're that's not the same person. But I face that. But that's how I found myself being so um, humorous at times because I learned at an early age it was easier Deflect. for me to to deflect or break the ice. Okay. That's why I may just walk in the room and say something funny to somebody. Ha, 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 come on in. You see what I'm saying? Mm. I see you when why you have your anxiety. I'd be like, oh, Jock is <laughs> tweaking a little bit. <laughs> Glitch McConnell. Yeah, my parents went straight. Uh, my mom let me do what I wanted to do. We could clearly. We could I, didn't, uh, I, didn't have no, <laughs> I didn't have no rules. Like a little stray? <laughs> yeah, I used to be everywhere. All on the other side of town. <laughs> Sure. Not a little <laughs> but but sometimes I wish I had that strictness. Sometimes I had I wish I had those boundaries, and I wouldn't have to bump my head so many times to get things right. Because I learned through trial and error. Because I was always right. You know, I wasn't I wasn't being told to do this. Yeah, but when you've been restricted for so long, at some point you're gonna want your freedom. Like I had to help raise my sisters and my brother. So once I got out of the house, I was just like. <laughs> yeah, so, I wouldn't have wanted that. Well, it's me. And you know what's interesting? I used to hear my mom um them talk about uh my aunt my aunt uh, Lisa, rest in peace to moms and Lisa Aunt Lisa and her daughter, Keela, my cousin, she was very strict on Keela. And they would always say, Boy, when she get loose, she gonna be buck wild. And she didn't necessarily go buck wild, but when she got loose, she got away. Mm. Yeah. And not not in a bad way. I'm just saying she was gone. She, gone. She went into the military. We were like, the military? She just was gone. She ain't want no parts of that no more. Yeah, so it be like that sometimes. I, I think, you know, we all have our reasons of who we are because of our parenting, whether it's oh, strict wow. or not. We want to know from y'all, man. Uh, you know, how how has your life been affected as an adult by way of strict parenting? Call us up, one 844 yung one 844 Young Jock in the streets, morning takeover, a happy to be able to serve you each and every morning. Same time, yes, same yes. place. Hi. Keep it locked. Yes. Good morning, y'all. It's your girl, Tamer Rivera. Got to stay tuned into your number one morning show, Young Jock and the Streets Morning Takeover. Shouts out to Tammy. All right, we're talking about this trending topic, man. Um, you know, uh, people are starting to do self-assessments and ask themselves why they are the way they are and who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people who were raised in extremely strict households are kind of expressing, you know, how it affected them as an adult, mm-hmm. even myself. You know, it's certain things that, like I said, I get anxiety mm-hmm. because whenever, like, I'll give you a perfect example. Sometimes I'm really cautious in my approach with people. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm less, um, I'm non-confrontational because my mom was such a firecracker. Like, she, you say mm-hmm. something to her, <laughs> she shutting it down, and you're like, well, that, okay. I feel you. You know, so I sometimes I don't, I don't just automatically just speak up like I may want to because I'm examining like what type of backlash I'm gonna receive for saying something. That's just the strictness of my mom, how she was. And I know you, shot nigga, you me shot nigga, you were saying that, you know, it made you a certain way as an adult. Oh the, yeah. Did, did did you but you never really got off the chain or you weren't wilding or nothing like that. But you kind of dove into the culture so hard. I did. It was like (laughs) exactly. I did, and it just didn't take me long to learn my lessons because of the good foundation that I came from. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it was it was a a challenge for about two years. And Shawty said that he wished that he had a more stricter uh, childhood. Yes, yes, it definitely goes into the way I parent now. Well, let's ask our listeners. Young Jack in the streets, morning, take over. How was being raised in an extremely strict household, how has that affected you as an adult? What's your name? Hey, my name is Ariel. I feel like it was a good thing and a bad thing. It was a good thing because it protected me from a lot of stuff. Like, as a woman, you hear a lot of girls getting called a lot of bad names and stuff very early in life. I didn't have to do all that because my parents, you know, kept me to where I couldn't. But 
at the same time, at my age, I'm 33 years old, there's a lot of teenagers and younger people that experience a lot more out of life than I did at my age. Kelly? Yeah, so I definitely grew up in a home where my father was, like, super strict. Um, I had three younger siblings, so it was my responsibility to make sure that they were taken care of when my parents got home from work. But not only that, like, being raised with strict parents, it definitely, it shattered you and keeps you in a bubble from a lot of things. So when you do turn 18 or how old oh, you get out there, you, you get buck wild. So it's not a good thing, but, you know, I have a teenage kid, so I tried to be as strict on her because I remember how I was once I got that freedom. So it also molded me into the person I am today. It can be challenging at times as well. Good morning. My name is Tanisha. I also had um, to help raise my brother and sister. My mom had me really young, and I had to help raise my brother and sister. When I graduated from college, I never went back home. I moved out of the state, and then a couple years after that, I moved further from that state. Wow. So it was like... Yeah, it was like I was finding. <laughs> I was traumatized too. But that's what I'm saying about my cousin Keila. That's the same thing, man. Thank you for your Yeah, time. so it was like I was finally free. Like that, that there's no hold on me anymore. Mm. I've been trying to take care of people. You feel like that's what it came from? Yeah, it did. And yep. my mom has been a caretaker for people forever, so I inherited that to a fault too. But you know what's so crazy? Um, it was certain things my mom would I, like, or my dad. Like my dad didn't play the radio either, mm-hmm. and and it actually helped me a lot. That's what it kind of sh- really straightened me up. Like you know what, uh-uh. I watched this man all these years, and I have to work for nobody, and mm-hmm. just kind of go out here and, and, and fight the world every day to just kind of make it make a way for his family. Right. And that's kind of where I kind of got that from. So I appreciate it, man. Are you smarter than you young John? Got nine kids. From it's on the way. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> They say the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Yeah, feel me. Yeah, feel me. Hey, man, 1-844-YUNGJOC. That's 1-844-986-4562 if you want to contest me. And are you smarter than Young Jock? Keep it right here where you got it. Young Jock in the streets morning. Take over. It's Are You Smarter Than Young Jock? The king and his gang. Only with Young Jock in the streets morning takeover. Young Jock in the streets morning takeover. What's your name? Where you calling from? Nicky Stigall, Columbus, Georgia. Nicky Stigall. Yes, sir. I'm about to turn you over to Miss Shot Nigga because I believe you think you're smarter than Young Jock. And do. All right, here we go. You have 10 seconds to answer each question. The first person to get all three questions correctly will be the winner. You guys cannot answer each other's questions and you cannot answer the question after your 10 seconds is up or you're going to be disqualified okay all right what's your name again nikki mickey like mickey mouse nah nikki like nikki yeah like little nikki okay i ain't nothing i ain't nothing look about me shot oh, okay Okay. That ain't what I read on the bathroom wall, but um, let's never, go, Nikki. I never went to a public bathroom. Well, you ain't. So I, you hopefully, had, you've never been into a woman's restroom before. I never went to a public bathroom. Okay, so you you piss outside if you're in public. No, what do no, you? I just hold it. I just hold it till I get home. <laughs> you know that causes a urinary tract infection, right? Uh, I, I don't. You probably don't have that. that. I, I don't. Okay. Anywho, let's uh, get into these questions. All right. What film is about a chocolate factory run by Willy Wonka? Is it A, Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory? Is it B, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Or is it Chocolate Factory? Or is it D, Willy's Chocolate Factory? Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. Is that your final answer? Yes, ma'am. Without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, I'm sorry. What? It's not correct. Uh, Young Jack, what <laughs> film is about a chocolate factory run by Willy Wonka? Uh, is it A, Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory? Is it B, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Is it C, Chocolate Factory? Or is it D, Willie's Chocolate Factory. It is B, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You are correct. All right, this one is for you, Young Jack. Yes. What is the hardest rock on earth? Is it A, limestone, B, diamond, C, lava, or D, seashell? Although it is one of the most fragile stones, it is considered one of the hardest. It is the diamond. Two. One. The diamond has very little to none. Is that your final answer? 
Fragility. Yes, it is a diamond. All right, you are absolutely correct, young jock. The more you know. Um, Nikki, this is for you. If you were born on New Year Day, what would your star sign be? Would it be A, Leo, B, Virgo, C, Libra, or D, Capricorn? Capricorn. You are absolutely correct. All right, young jock. How many weeks are there in a year? Is it A, 49, B, 42, C, 56, or D, 54? Ghetto boys once said that dropping them 52 bowls on 52 weeks and we just stop playing with them. Three. Appreciate you, Nikki. All right, that is correct. (laughs) Nikki, I am sorry, but you did not win this. Young Jock won. Therefore, you win absolutely nothing. You you win win nothing but a shout out. Would you like to shout out to your country brethren? Yes, I'd like to give a shout out to all my baby mamas. I I really appreciate the good job you're doing with my kids, even though I'm not there 100% of the time. Get your ass off our phone. Goodbye. <laughs> Go to hell. Test your wits. Test your knowledge for cash and prizes. Take it, take it, the game, the game's mine. It's Are You Smarter Than Young Jock? The king and his gang. gang Only with Young Jock in the streets morning takeover. Are You Smarter Than Young Jock? It's sponsored by the law offices of Julian Lewis Sanders and Associates in the car rent call, 855 J Sanders. That's right, Young Jock in the streets morning takeover. We got to get right into this right here. Let me shout Nika and shout her. Here's something very interesting. The courts are seemingly turning up the heat on the seats of D.A. Funny Willis as this disqualification hearing will resume today. Today, we could hear new testimony in a hearing to determine whether Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis should be disqualified from the Trump racketeering case. His name is Terrence Bradley. He first showed up under subpoena a couple of weeks ago. He's a former law partner and one-time divorce attorney of Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor in the Trump case that D.A. Fonnie Willis had a now-acknowledged relationship with. The question is the time Timing of that relationship. Willis and Wade testified that they began dating after he took the case. Ashley Merchant, the defense attorney for Trump co-defendant Mike Roman, tried to get Bradley to answer questions that she says would dispute that timeline. Well, Bradley made it clear he didn't want to be there testifying and he wouldn't answer most questions, citing attorney-client privilege. Now, when you speak Ooh. of attorney-client privilege, that means that, you know, he can't really speak on what he knows about his client right <laughs> well by way of subpoena mm-hmm. he's gonna have to that's gonna happen today he's gonna testify and uh we're gonna see how this is gonna play out because you know it, it is what it is they're trying to discredit her more and more yeah. uh in this situation and where it feels like we had gotten past that point of uh, understanding that they okay they did have relations they had dealings mm-hmm. and this was said that it was after his uh divorce well these documents from these phone records is gonna prove differently because i think he came out and said that he had been in her house well it was like 35 times well, this, 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 this is what happened they uh donald trump them filed some more papers they went and got the phone records of wade and they say wade had made over two thousand phone calls twelve thousand text messages and been to the house 35 times within the time when they said they were not messing around. This just in 2021. And they may well not have been messing around because they could have been. And like she said, you know, it's a lot of things going on. A lot of people wanted to go against her in this attempt to convict former President Donald Trump. So, you know, she may, have, she it may come out and she say, hey, well, we met there because blah, blah, blah. But if they open those text records, that what? may show something different. So. These phones be the devil. Yeah, what you got coming up? Well, you definitely got to keep it locked. There is a man accusing Diddy of some very salacious things uh, that's turning into a big lawsuit and, you know, a lot of media attention. (laughs) We definitely got to get into... Oh, man, so many things going on inside the Word on the Streets News. I'm worried for Fonny. Mm. Y'all keep it locked. Keep it locked right here. to Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. Word on the Streets going down like Jock said. It's Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover with Miss Shanika. All right. Well, since Sunday, we witnessed football star, former football star Cam Newton, as he got into a brawl. 
at a seven on seven tournament, right? With uh, some coaches. And the guys that got into a fight with Cam are speaking up. It's just been a lot of trash talk, more so his side, just out of nowhere, just talking crazy to us for no reason. It's like nothing new. Like, I've been around bro for five years, so mm-hmm. like this typical Cam Newton behavior. What's the, and as I'm know, walking up the stuff, Cam is in stuff face. I made y'all responsible for everything y'all do, whatever. The, then he grabs stuff. Okay. So me being my little brother and I'm walking up a flight of steps and I see a 6'6 six, six guy grabbing my brother. Nothing outside else and, ever like, nobody's okay. seeing like how he was talking, talking crazy, crazy for like the past two that. days. Like yeah. nobody's seen that. Like, Oh, wow. Well, I heard that they apologized to uh, the people and they were put off the premises, Cam and the guys who got into the altercation. So, yeah, (laughs) very interesting. Uh, Glad to hear their part. So what's going to change? Because people keep saying, oh, trash talking is a part of the sport or whatever, but not at the detriment where you're like really doing the most, because at some point men are going to be men. See, here's the thing. You, it, 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 it's kind of like classism. Like okay. If two, if two, you know, two coaches or cats just talking this uh-huh. one thing, right? But then when you got this guy who, who has multi-millions in his account, Mm-hmm. Uh, he has a greater influence than you. He's got the spotlight at the moment. He has a bigger You're impression. To me. He has a bigger impression on these children, even the parents out there, whoever. Yeah. And when you find him trash talking, it's like you're having to overexert this extra. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to make it seem like you there, you there with him. It's nothing. We ain't scared of you. We mm-hmm. we don't care. You got money. We don't care who you is. Forget your name. Forget your brand. Forget your accomplishments. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what what pushes it over the edge. You know, it's just like a rich cat taunting a broke cat. And I didn't it, say broke, exactly, but, you know but I mean? at some point he has to humble himself. Mm-hmm. Like I understand, but coming with that and you constantly just trash talking. These people said they put up with it for five years. Well, the kids trash talk Cam too because he he's mm-hmm. not that he's not that far removed from when he was just at Westlake High School. You get what I'm saying? It ain't that long ago. And he still looks young, youthful, viable. So the kids trash talk too. So if you look back at um, past incidents with him and kids in mm-hmm. these spaces, the kids trash talk too. So that's him trying to, you know, just like right, y'all want to talk trash, I can talk trash. I ain't gonna get offended. All right. Well, thank you for your insight, no, young Jack. No problem. Inside this word on the streets news. Mm. Uh, that's being brought to you by <laughs> Bader Scott Accident Attorneys. If you are in a car accident, make sure you hit up my people at Bader Scott. That's right. The Love Doc Jock is on the way. Coming up at the 05. Keep it locked, Young Jock in the streets morning. Take over. It's about that time for the Love Doc Jock. Help me help you help okay. me. Okay, come on. What's your problem? And this guy will either help or hinder your relationship. Who do I think I am? Why I tell people that? Either way, he's a man for the job. It's Young Jock in the streets morning. Take over. you absolutely right. That's exactly who it is this morning. And I want to say thank you to our listeners who tune in to us each and every morning. Same time, same place. Look, the Love Doc Jock is in effect right now. Miss Shanika. We've been doing something a little different here lately for the past couple of weeks. And I've noticed that a lot more people are making submissions to our DMs. You can always do that at Streets Morning Takeover with a Z. And uh, we'll gladly go through and find the ones that we think are best for airing. I'm so tired of reading. That's my job. It's fundamental. That ain't it. But ain't it fundamental. <laughs> All right. Dear love, Doc Jack. So I was just playing, right? Me and my boyfriend, we got into... A argument over the weekend about something I can't even remember. And so this morning, he texts me saying, are you done being moody now? So I sent him the YouTube link to Beyonce's Irreplaceable. I never got a text back with the laughing emoji. Said, Jock, I was just playing, laughing out loud. Please tell my boyfriend to come back. And I was just playing. Okay, I'm going to make this real quick for anybody listening. Ladies, it's okay to have a sense of humor. Um, but I'm going to tell you this. Men already feel like, we already taught that women mature faster than us. Y'all are sneakier than us. Y'all are mm-hmm. smarter than us and more cunning than us in a lot of ways. Yes. No man wants to feel like this woman gave me all the signs and I missed them. So if your woman, if my woman sent me the Beyonce Irreplaceable record, mm-hmm. I'm automatically turned off and now I'm possibly going to be distracted by anybody else who feels like I'm not irreplaceable 
you can't play like that. Like some things you just don't do. Even though you just like, you know, y'all could have laughed. Like, you like, oh, okay, that's really what that we done. Okay, all right, you know, could have done that. But whatever y'all was arguing about, you don't even remember what y'all was arguing about, which tells me that you might just say anything or do anything in the argument. You don't even remember what y'all argued about. So, so think about the concept of that. You, he took it seriously. You didn't. And then you turned around and sent him a song like this. So you don't even know why you even sending him a song saying he's irreplaceable and you don't even remember what y'all was arguing about. That would make any man feel like you're not worthy of his time. Hell no, I'm not texting you back right now. Yes, I'm in my feelings. You got a problem with me being in my feelings? Ain't that what you in it for? For us to reciprocate feelings and emotions and love? Yeah, baby, quit playing. All that playing gonna catch up to you. And that's why you ain't talk back to your man. Okay? So call him. Tell him you apologize. And you won't do that again. And that's the love doc job. Similar play. All right? It's easy as black and white. Now, to anybody who has a small business and you like to be spotlighted, feel free to hit us at 1-844-YUNGJOC. Again, that number is 1-844-986-4562. I can't wait to hear from you, baby. All the time. Just just, just keep it locked, all right? Miss Shanika? Yes. You know today the limo's on the way, too, right? Sure. Coming up at the 25. Can't keep it locked. Wait. It's a toxic Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a terrific Tuesday too, man. And I ain't gonna even lie to you, Charlotte, man. Yeah, we got some guests. I just seen a, uh, a rundown of the guests, special guests we're gonna have in the building this week, man. Uh-huh. And it looks good, man. I oh, feel right. great about our morning show. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being a real one. Shouts out to you, Miss Shanika, man. We all be trying to weather the storm each and every day, no matter what we're going through. Yes, we got to make sure we keep it up, upbeat, and popping for our listeners. And we Hi. can't do it without y'all. So I definitely appreciate our listeners, man. Thank you. Shouts out to all our affiliates. In every market and the markets to come. Yes. Shout it. Yep. Tonight, I'm going crazy. You're going crazy. Follow me on my IG to see where I'm going to be at in the city because I'm popping. Yes. And I want them to follow me also on Shotty the Comedian because yep. I am on the Make America Funny Again tour and I will be performing Friday. So y'all go to my page to see what city I'm in. That's right. Hey, y'all know it's love, man. We'll catch y'all tomorrow for something Hi. Wednesdays. Make sure y'all keep it right here where you got it. Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. Keep it locked right here to Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover.